Okay, starting turn number three, and Arjun's going to go. Now Arjun has this utility power that allows him to gain two hit points, and we're going to go ahead and use that now. Again, if we end up drawing one of those treasure cards that allow us to flip over a power, and we don't have any powers flipped over, then it will have been a waste of that power, or will have been a waste of that treasure. And Arjun's already down four hit points, so yeah, seems like a good time to get this put into use. So use this at the start of your hero phase, gain two hit points, flip it over. So that's the first thing we're going to do. And that's going to take Arjun back up to eight hit points, which is pretty comfortable. Now, the question is, do we try to deal with this gargoyle, or do we just try to run away from it? So, again, we can use Precise Strike on it again, because we were lucky and drew a treasure card, and we were able to flip that right back over. If that hits, it's going to do two damage to it, which will take it out, and if it misses, we can try again. So that's a pretty good choice. The only problem with this option is that if we use this, we're, Arjun will not be on an unexplored edge, so he won't be able to explore. So one of the other things we may want to consider doing is using Trapping Strike. So what we would do is we would use Arjun's speed of 5 to have him move, say, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4. This would be fine. He could move over here. And then Trapping Strike would allow him to pull the gargoyle over adjacent to him and then attack. However, it would only do one damage if it hit. So it wouldn't kill it. And that would mean that it would still be around during Alyssa's villain phase to do another attack. However, as long as Alyssa can kill it before it gets a chance to activate, then it wouldn't it wouldn't activate again. Problem is Alyssa's slowed and she wouldn't be able to move that far. She can move one, two, and that's it. <sighs> so decisions, decisions. If if Alyssa didn't have that slowed, that would be it would be it'd be a much easier choice. I would use I would use Trapping Strike to pull it in, do one hit hit on it, and I guess if I missed, I could re-roll the dice to try to hit it again, and as long as that hit, that would do one damage, and uh, and then Elissa could finish it off. Problem is, we, that's not going to work. Let's see. Maybe... What are her options? So... Choose a tile within two. So, just trying to think. That's only in adjacent monsters, so. Hmm. So, all right, I, I'm, tr I'm just trying to think about the best thing to do, because I don't want to use that precise strike yet, again, if I don't have to. Um, and mainly, and it's not so much using that, it's the fact that if I come down here adjacent to the gargoyle, then I'm not exploring. <clears throat> and we want to get through those dungeon tiles to reveal the uh, chapel. So, if I go and use Tide of Iron and pull the gargoyle up next to me, that will allow me to do one damage on it. And then when it's Alyssa's turn, well, I guess the thing is, either way... So, okay, so here's the thing. When Alyssa goes, there's no way she's going to be able to explore. The only way she'd be able to explore is if she, if she uh, skipped her attack entirely and moved twice. Because she slowed, so she can only move two, but you can move twice if you skip your attack. So she could go one, two, three, four. That's still not enough. Well, no, that would be enough, because then she's got these unexplored edges. So... So I, have to th I just have to think. So if Arjun comes down next to the gargoyle and uses Precise Strike, he gets two chances to hit it because of the reroll. That's a pretty good chance of hitting it. 
and killing it. But then he doesn't explore. And then it becomes Alyssa's turn. Well, it, he has to take an encounter for not exploring. Then it becomes Alyssa's turn. And she can move twice. And then she can definitely explore. Or Arjun can move over here. He can pull the gargoyle up to here. <clears throat> Use his utility power, which doesn't cause us to flip anything over. If he hits, he does one damage, and then we explore, and we get another monster out. All right, I think I think I'm gonna have Arjun come over here and try to kill this thing. So one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, and he can just make it. So Arjun's gonna move over here. He's going to use his precise strike again, which gets a plus eleven. I just I don't like having that gargoyle around, and I'm always afraid that in a second one will come out, and if Alyssa draws a second one, it just goes in the... If Alyssa were to draw a second one, it would just go in the discard pile, but if Arjun draws a gargoyle, then we have two gargoyles on the map, and they both activate every time. So he got a 9, a 9 plus 11 is 20, so that's definitely going to hit. So the precise strike did its job. We'll flip it over. Gargoyle's gone, and that's a big threat. I don't, I don't like the gargoyles. And the gargoyle, uh, we get that experience, so now we have a decent amount of experience. We only have enough for two, or for one, um, we can cancel one encounter, but we're almost all the way to canceling another encounter. Let's go ahead and update Arjun. So he didn't need a surge, he moved, he attacked, he will gain a treasure. So let's see what Arjun gets. Hit points are always nice. Until the end of your next hero phase, each hero gains plus two bonus to attack rolls. That could almost be useful under a slightly different circumstance, but as things stand, I don't think it's going to be useful. But we'll update his uh, blessings slash conditions and note that he got the guided strike. I'll just put GS. He did not explore, so no tile, no new monster. Uh, I will mark that the gargoyle's gone. But we do have a forced encounter. Luckily, if it's terrible, we can cancel it. So let's take a look at the encounter. Passage of time, each hero takes one damage. I don't think that's bad enough to to bother canceling it. So each hero takes one damage. So Alyssa goes down to two. And Arjun goes down to seven. All right, so normally monsters would activate, but there are none. So his villain phase ends. Alyssa's hero phase begins. She could sure use some hit points. Mm. Uh, I might have I'll have to watch the video playback. I may have not used that at the best. That, that might have been good to use, basically. Okay, so Alyssa uh, has nothing that she really can do other than move. So, because there's no monsters, no traps. So she's going to move one. Uh, let me see, where was Arjun? I think he was here. You can move through heroes. You can't move through monsters. So she can move one, two three, four, and that will get her, uh, and that's, that's if she moves twice because she slowed, but that will get her onto this other tile, and with her scout ability, she can um, explore an unexplored edge. So this goes away, and let's update for Alyssa. So she didn't need a token, she moved twice. She will not get treasure because she didn't attack and kill anything. And she is exploring. And take off the cobalt skirmisher, it's gone. And let's see what tile she explores. And she got a black triangle, so there will be an encounter. But before we worry about that, let's draw the monster. And she gets a rat swarm. These aren't too bad. Let's put that down here. Come over to our table of monsters. 
and put the rat swarm on the new tile. Here we are. And we'll update things for Alyssa. So she got a black tile. She got rats. Wait. Yeah, that's right. Oh, I put the... Uh, no, I guess I never marked the slowed condition for her. So last turn she was slowed. I just forgot to mark it. But that's gone now. And... She did have an encounter. And it's going to be the rats when it comes time for that. But now she needs to draw an encounter card. Until the end of your next hero phase, each hero gains plus two bonus to attack rolls. Well, she's not going to be attacking, so. And we got a environment. These are never fun. Whenever a hero attacks a monster that is not on his or her tile, that hero makes the attack roll twice and uses the lower results so that they roll with disadvantage. Whenever a hero attacks a monster that is not on his... This isn't too bad for us because um, we pretty much always do adjacent attacks. But I will put that environment card on the game board so that I can remember to see it all the time. Okay, so that was her encounter. So now the rats will activate. And the rats are going to move to her tile and attack everybody on that tile, but it's just her. So if the rat swarm is within one tile, and it is, it moves to the closest hero's tile and attacks each hero on that tile. So it's going to move bone pile to bone pile. It doesn't say that it has to be adjacent, so when it's not adjacent, you just go bone pile to bone pile. And it's going to attack every hero on the tile, which is just Alyssa. And it's going to attack with a plus seven. So, let's get a decently low roll. 10, that's uh, not going to be low enough. 10 plus 7 is 17. That's enough to hit Alyssa. But, luckily, it doesn't slow her down or do anything else. It just, it just hits. However, it does take her down to one hit point. So, she's in really rough shape. And on the threshold of death. But, that will be the end of turn number 3. And we'll come back and see how things play out in turn number four.